G'day, Alistair here. In this video, I want to talk about storage spaces. So if you have a Windows machine, uh, 10 or 11, you can create a storage pool. So if you have a whole, whole bunch of drives lying around, you can pull them together into one, um, well, a storage pool. And here I've got uh, a storage pool of 36.3 terabytes. And that's made up of a number of um, physical drives. So I've got five uh, in in this um, in the storage pool, and they, the, basically their capacity is combined together, and then you can allocate a storage space within that. And here I've allocated a 29 terabyte storage space, and that's using parity. So basically, if one of the drives fails, I won't lose any data, and if a second drive fails, I probably will. Quite often, when a drive fails or is taken out of the pool for some reason, the remaining drives, they, they reallocate uh, any free space to take advantage of the parity, uh, or create a new parity. And then if another drive, drive fails uh, after it's completed, recalculating all the parity, you won't lose any data, assuming A, you had enough free space, and B, there's enough time uh, between drive failures. But uh, you can do dual parity is, is an option. I don't think I don't think it's available in Windows Pro, which is what I've got. So Windows 11 Pro. Uh, I think you need Windows Server for that. And you can also, rather than using NTFS, which is what I'm using, you can use REFS, um, which is a new file system that's probably going to replace NTFS at some point in the future. And it's uh, got a whole, whole bunch of advantages in terms of um, fault tolerance and stuff like that. So it'll work better if um, there's a, um, you know, failures and stuff. And it might actually be more e e efficient with spinning drives. I'm, I'm not sure about that one. But yeah, as, as you can see, I've got five eight terabyte drives. Uh, well, they're 7.27. 7 the label is eight terabytes, but eight, uh, 8 thousand gigabytes or eight million, eight trillion trillion bytes, uh, as opposed to two to the 40, or eight times two to the 40, I suppose. That's, yeah, so that's, 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 how I've allocated um, these drives. You can allocate, so change settings and create a, a storage space and you get a bunch of options. Um, I have available <laughs> 7.3 gigabytes. So if I had no resiliency, I could possibly call a 7, 7.3 even. Uh, yeah, yeah, but probably just to leave a little bit of space. Uh, and in this case, no resiliency. Resiliency. If I go to a mirror, yeah, okay, so that's 14 gigabytes. I, I don't have 14 gigabytes, so I have to go sort of 3.5 or a three-way three, three, three way mirror. Um, 2.5 or 2.2, something like that. And uh, that's using so we get 2.2 gigabytes, but we're using uh, 6.59 uh, and parity, which is what what I'm using because it uses the least. Um, and the amount of storage that you lose is going to depend on the number of drives you have. So the more drives you have, the the greater of the the, the capacity of those drives you can use. So. Uh, yeah, I could probably get it to five, let's say 4.5 gigabytes in this case, and I'd still be under the 7.3 that I have available. So, um, yeah, so that's creating one. Uh, and I've only got the option of NTFS, I think, as I say, there might be a registry hack or something you can do to get REFS, but I believe it's available on Windows Server. So we don't need to create one. So the drive itself, if we have a, a bit of a look, uh, it just looks like a regular drive uh, and you use it completely. I've allocated it as Z and yeah, I've used less than half currently. I am using using this as kind of backup of files, videos and uh, photos and all that kind of stuff, uh, kind of a, a copy of stuff I've got in the cloud and vice versa. Uh, and all sorts of just random files I've, I've collected over the years. But also I have been ripping or um, 
DVDs and Blu-rays that I've got in my collection, uh, which I have quite a few. And so I've been putting them in here and they are available. I use a Jellyfin server. So that's running down here. Um, and that allows, it's kind of like a private Netflix. And it, I've encoded all the videos in H.264 and that can play them back so I can watch watch things on, on my, um, like on a tablet or a laptop or on the media center or whatever supports Jellyfin. Flex is the other other option you could use for that. I just happen to choose Jellyfin. Um, it, it seemed uh, a better option at the time. Of course, these things change from, from year to year as to which is sort of the best option, but uh, I, think, I think this will be fine. Um, so in, in terms of performance, uh, using parity, performance is not great. So, uh, oh, and I suppose I can show you here. So there's my storage space. You can see, you can't see the, um, the five drives that make up, um, this storage space, but it just, yeah, as I look for, to, to most things, it looks like a, um, a physical drive. And so, yeah, I've allocated that as drive Z or Z. So performance, so read performance is pretty good if you're dealing with large files, dealing with small files, not so great. That's what Windows caching is for, obviously. And likewise with um, writing. So good good read speeds. So the, the drives themselves, I think were 100 and something megabytes a second, uh, 150 or something like that. The I mean, mechanical, mechanical drives are not fast. Um, but yeah, you get quite, quite good read performance. But right performance, you know, parity needs to be calculated and written to the drives separately, and um, there's clever algorithms that allocate things to to make sure you're not going to lose data when uh, when um, a drive fails. So now you can tweak things to to get performance. Let's come out of uh, full screen mode. So I'm just using um, Google Remote Desktop to uh, look at that machine. Um, so these are the parameters I chose in the end. So to change the interleave size, you need to create the storage space via a command line. And there's other videos on how to do that. Uh, in fact, you can just Google it and, um, uh, and it really only works if you've got a whole bunch of drives of about the same size. If you're using, um, random sizes, then I don't think any of this is going to matter too much. Um, make your best guess um, but the drives are fairly fast to create and delete so you can sort of test them out uh, fairly fairly quickly so I just did a very basic read and write test with uh, crystal disk mark and uh, as you can see that the, the numbers very lot of kind of bolded numbers that were uh, kind of a bit larger than than usual but it turns out the synthetic benchmarks aren't very accurate in terms of real world, real world, um, real world performance. Um, I think having because the, the synthetic kind of bypasses the Windows cache, and uh, because the drives, uh, because of multiple drives, I think they benefit a lot more from um, disk caching. So uh, effectively, if I go to the temp folder and grab a large file, so this. Um, Windows 11 ISO, for instance. Oops, I'll come it into here. We can see, so this is obviously cache is initially doing all the work and then it starts to, to peter off. So uh, I figure this is kind of up to about 200 megabytes per second um, write speed for really large sustained writes. Uh, but it varies, and I haven't copied this file before, so let's copy that to here. And we see the, the, the read speeds are pretty good. So if you're using it as a file server, then um, for, for you know, reading files, that is fine, which is primarily um, what I'm doing. I'll be occasionally writing files, but mostly reading them, or just you know, storing them forever. So you might need to play around a little bit to try and work out what numbers you need to choose 
for your particular configuration of drives. And I yeah, recommend just copying a really large file, sort of uh, so it has to be more than a gigabyte. Uh, otherwise, the Windows cache um, will kind of hide any deficiencies. And of course, so this is the interleave size. So you, you do that on the, when you create the storage space on the command line. Uh, and this is when you format the drive is the cluster size. So if we come back, if I go format, we can say this is the allocation unit size, the cluster size. Uh, in this case, it's kind of using the minimum 4096, but you can push that out to uh, two megabytes. But of course, the larger the cluster size, so a even a small, uh, you know, a tiny file, a one byte file will, will take up a single cluster. So it'll occupy a cluster. I think, although I think if you've got uh, a bunch of uh, lots of small small files, you could um, compress the folder. So we go into properties and somewhere in here, um, there's the ability to uh, compress the contents somewhere. I can't remember. I've, I've used it occasionally in the past. But um, yes, you could. And I think that allows storing more than one file within a cluster at the cost of performance, obviously. But if you've got you know a million small files, you know they, they could make you know, go from taking up a few megabytes to taking up um, a few gigabytes of a physical disk space. So um, that's I think that's kind of all I wanted to say in this video. Um, storage spaces. I think if you've already got a Windows machine, um, either your your desktop or uh, a server then running storage spaces is kind of a no-brainer. Uh, it doesn't require any additional licensing software. It's all it's all baked into the operating system. You can also take those drives from one machine and put them into another. I have tried that with some USB drives and the other copy of Windows will recognize that as a storage space, uh, which is quite nice. That means you're not, not tied. Uh, you only, you know, if you your desktop fails, you can, you can shift those drives to another machine and you'll be able to recover the files from them. So that's all good. Um, so yes, use, yeah, if you've got uh, a win Windows machine, then absolutely. The other options would be running hardware RAID. You'll need drives of the same size. Um, a lot of a lot of motherboards support hardware RAID. And uh, that might be good performance. I think it's, it's it's probably the sensible way of doing it if you're wanting to do either mirroring, you know, RAID, RAID 1 or 2. Uh, RAID 5 is a bit more complicated uh, and does require quite a lot of computation. So uh, you, you'll you need a reasonable amount of hardware to be able to do that. Other options, TrueNAS or UnRAID, uh, two popular um, sort of NAS options if you've got another machine. Uh, otherwise, you dedicate a NAS box of some kind um, and you plug plug drives into and it, it'll just work, which is probably the probably the easiest option for most people. Um, storage spaces is, itself is also pretty easy, um, particularly, you know, has a nice GUI interface and it, the that works fine unless you're wanting to do special stuff like um, having a SSD or something like that as a, a cache and use that as a read and write cache. Um, if you don't want to, uh, I don't, and I'm not even sure you can do that with uh, Windows Pro, you might need sort of uh, Windows Server, sort of Enterprise or something like that to, to be able to do that. Um, I have used um, third party software, whose name escapes me at the moment, um, to use SSDs as uh, disk caches and that works great if you've got like an enormous steam folder um, like or something like that you've got terabytes of files but you're only using a small small number of them at a time uh, in which case you know that those will go into a into the um, cache on the SSD and that, then you get the SSD performance uh, bearing in mind that SSDs don't like lots of writes they tend to wear out so uh, you might need to be careful about choosing what kind of SSD you get uh, for doing that. You probably don't want just the, the, the cheapest of the cheap uh, SSDs. You probably want to get something that um, can handle a, a large, you know, a large number of writes. 
in and in saying in saying that if if you are doing mostly reads and doing occasional writes, then that's probably not a, pro not a problem. A uh, throwing in a an NVMe drive or something like that as a cache will drastically improve the performance. Uh, also increases the complexity, but uh, <laughs> anyhow. So that's all I probably want to say in this video. It's kind of just a, a rambling video uh, about using storage spaces. Um, if you've got two or more drives that you want to pull together, then it makes a lot of sense. If you you know going for you know RAID zero, if you're not worried about the the contents of the the drive, but uh, you're wanting lots of, lots of you know improving the performance, even mirroring will improve read read performance because you've got two drives you can read from. It's not actually doing uh, error detection on on the on the data. It's only doing uh, confirming that. Uh, well, if, yeah, making sure that a drive doesn't fail. If you want actual error detection, I think you need the yeah, parity can do that. Um, kind of getting into, I think you probably need three drives. You can use it looking at Hamming codes and things like that um, for uh, calculating um, sort of the, the there's no longer parity at that point, but um, calculating error correction data. Um, sorry, I'm just rambling on at this point. So definitely. Yeah, consider using storage spaces. Uh, I've been quite happy with it so far. I am going to create a, another um, storage server because having backups is good. Um, I can currently copy everything on there. On I've got a 12, 12 terabyte external drive, or I can spread it across several drives potentially. Um, so I need to make a backup of the, the work done so far uh, because you know it could have a, a a machine failure power spike or something like that or the something on the motherboard could could do really bad things and cause several drives to fail or be damaged or just the file system could get corrupted and uh, be unable to recover uh, the files or that gets corrupted and i don't know what files are, are valid or not so um, i'm alistair thanks for watching this video uh, i hope you found my uh ranting <laughs> to be useful um do do can yeah Storage spaces is good. If you're doing an, um, another machine, Unraid or Trujanaz, and one of those is commercial, so you need a license for it. Um, might be Unraid, uh, but it's not, not very expensive. It's one-off one -off license, so it'll be way less than the cost of the drives. Yeah, and so yeah, if, you, if you're building a new file server, and also both Unraid and um, the other one, <laughs> Trujanaz, um, support like doing um running docker docker containers and things like that things like that so you can run jellyfin and what have you um home assistant and all sorts of other things um on on that so uh i'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching and i will see you later